I swear y'all, this a woo, my own big dude. I'm the real big dude, ain't no none of that. I, when I lost Brandon, I, 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 I had caught that day. June 12th, I'll never forget it. And he was like, nothing song. He said, you gon' you gonna blow just made me proud, I'm be looking at you. I'm like, what? And so you so then like my daddy died in my face, like You actually see him pass away? Like on the phone, like oh like, A video posted on Facebook shows the moments before a Mississippi concert turned into a deadly shooting. Flyers on social media say the concert Saturday night was for a Memphis area rapper named Big Boogie. So a lot of this information here just coming in, that rapper Big Boogie, he's from Memphis, Tennessee, and is one of 20 people arrested after this shooting. Okay, but some after data came out, he said, oh, Boogie and so-and-so shooting on camera. Oh, give me life if y'all see me shooting on camera. She did what I told the detectives. And she, and like, I'm, I'm looking at her, my face shaking. My eyes bloodshot red, but like, I ain't know what the f you see what I'm saying? My nephew just told me 65. That what, that what the charge was. Hey, yo, squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. Everybody wants to be the biggest, but one dude claims to be the biggest of them all, the Memphis thug and rap star, Big Boogie. Coming up through pain, loss, hearing his pops pass on the phone, being at a tempted hit charge, beefing with the shystiest of the shysties, Big Boogie seen it and done it all. With God guiding his path, he ain't stopping no time soon. That's if the entire Memphis gunning for his life doesn't get in the way. Here's all you need to know about the life of the big dude, Big Boogie. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. John Lotz, a.k.a. Big Boogie, originally was born in Tallulah, Louisiana, before moving to Frazier in Memphis. <laughs> what part of Memphis you from? Frazier. Boogie started out as a kid making everybody laugh. Like, I was goofy. I'm goofy. And, like, I could walk into class, just make everybody laugh, and really have a lot of people sitting around me like I'm that type of person. But cross him, and his temper can go out of control. Even anger management couldn't control the rage. This temper, have you ever had to take anger management class or something of that nature for? Yeah, but it ain't working. From a kid, he was fearless. I mean, bro and them was busting each other head with bricks and bottles for fun. You got a scar on your head. How did yeah. you get a scar? I was, uh, I was 11 years old. Me and my brother. That looks like an 11 year old. Like, that looks my like the type of shit yeah. that would happen to your kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, me and my brother were playing whipping fight. You heard it? That's how he got the scar on his forehead. He was a smart kid just with bad ways that would eventually lead him down a path that nearly lost his life and freedom. Originally, he wanted to be a drummer. He was the captain leading the band and everything. Even got a scholarship where they dropped some M's on him to pursue further in college. But being young, thugging, and wanting to be a rapper, he turned it down. I was a drum major at first, so I really wanted to rap at first. A drum? a drum major. So you were like drumline type shit? Nah, like I was the person that was like got the felt on top of the head, like leading the band. Bookie started cutting hair, but that wasn't going to get him where he wanted to be. So him and his partner, who used to rap, started scheming about music. Boogie was about to struggle. He wanted the world to know who he was. Either, either we gon' either we gon' stay here to keep struggling, wait on a death date. Or just be, mm. or just, or just, just go through struggling life. I can't do it. Hell, no, I can't do it. Mm. My heart's too big. Mm. I gotta. I, the world gotta know me. Even when he was thugging it with his crew, he kept his focus. Unlike homies who crashed out. Boogie would soon experience a huge loss, though. When he was in the tenth grade, Boogie's father passed away on the phone while they were talking. Turns out his pops was ill from liquor poisoning, but kept it secret from his kids. I think it was liquor poisoning. My mom, they, they told me it was liquor poisoning, but they really didn't want to tell me what it was. I, but I knew it was something because he kept calling him. I said he loved me and uh, you gonna blow and you gonna be big and all this shit. So I'm like, wow. Big Boogie had to hear his pop's last breath on the phone and that took everything from him. You heard his last breath. Yeah. After feeling lost, he found strength in finding God and understanding life through that connection he found. Boogie suffered a big loss and he couldn't even stomach going to his pop's funeral to see him laid out. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't you know, I ain't want to see this shit. Like, even if the funeral was, they, they tried to drag, come get me, I ain't want to go. Cause like, yeah, nah, I don't want to see my, my pop like that. Boogie turned to music. He took that pain and emotion and channeled it into his songs. 
Boogie had to build himself up from the bottom. With nothing but a roof over his head at his sister place, Boogie was sleeping on the floor with a speaker as a pillow and started really soul searching. I was in a, like I was staying with my sister. So I ain't, I ain't have a, I ain't have a bed there, period. So, you know, I was, I was sleeping on the floor. But I'm shit, I'm, 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 I'm safe though. Yeah, shout but, out to sis. Yeah, shout out to her. You feel me? Believe that. So I ain't have a bed. I was, my, my head was on, my head was on the speaker, but I had cover on top of the speaker though. Yeah. Like, but that was my pillow. He dropped the song's life story and I feel it. But the one that really got him some traction was See No Evil that he came up with laying on one of them speakers wanting to experience a personal bond with God. That was when Big Boogie found his voice and took off, having his daughter helped, keeping him together. The blessing started rolling in, and in July 2018, Big Boogie would drop the track Let Me Know. After that, he got a phone call from Yo Gotti telling him they flying him to NY, and Boogie later signed to CMG. They called, they were like, yo, fly to New York, and I'm like, who it is? He just, they were like, no, they, you know, this CMG, this Yo Gotti, who I'm like, and I flew out the next morning. We're gonna make sure you got all the pressure behind you, all the energy you need to get to them. From then forward, Big Boogie became the big dude. It, now he, he teach me the game, you see what I'm saying, like to keep going. So now it, what I know now, it, he added on to what I know. <laughs> so now it's like, hey, he's telling me shit, you know what I'm saying? He's telling me about fuck it. That was, that was my name, Big Dude come from. When I be like, when I be pounding on my, on my page, Big Dude. He been enduring hell since then. Fights, jail, shootouts, being shot at. I I have been through a lot of Memphis more than Louisiana. Like Louis, like Memphis. I I have been to, I've been to jail down here. Uh, you know, gang fights, shootouts, you know, all the negative I've been through out it. He finally made it big, but with fame came responsibilities and sacrifices. Oh, I got put out plenty of times. Um like I said, the uh, the hatred, the shootouts and stuff like that, friends changing, family changing, um, people people I lost in they, they, they my shows and they was close, like it, it's different type of sacrifices that I seen. Things would get even worse when he was arrested. It was his little cuz OB day that night. Big Book slid through the crib to enjoy the vibes when things went left. Caught in the big buggy, he was kicking it with his homie Fred from school when the altercation broke out. The person, the person, the person got the person got hit. I went to school with him. You see what I'm saying? I, I bro, bro, no, I with him off the muscle. I he me back. You see what I'm saying? Bro, bro can just inbox me. Hey, bro, you good? You checking on you? Woo -woo. That this this Fred, this this Fred by himself. You see what I'm saying? He he a real solid nigga. That's how I know him. So boom. Altercation went on, boom, he got hit, you see what I'm saying? But the whole time, the whole time that everything going on in the club. Dudes was drunk, wildin', and only one security was there. In the melee, they crossed Big Boogie, and that's when he said things popped off and he dipped. Next thing Boogie knew, his name was in the news saying he was caught trying to murk somebody with the strap on camera. But somebody, uh, after data came out, you see what I'm saying? Oh, Boogie and so-and-so shooting on camera. Boogie was arrested on attempted hit charges with his bond set at 100k before raising it to 250k. Yo Gotti was ready to bond bro out, but his lawyer said detectives got nothing on him. Potentially losing all his hard work was messing heavy with Boogie's mind, so he vented to the one person he believed in, God. I mean, I'm just thinking that motherfucker like, damn fool, this can't be it. This can't be it. I'm talking about every day. I'm just looking at the ceiling like, this shit can't be it. I ain't, I don't, you see what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't just get on my knees and pray to God. You see what I'm saying? I talk to him, I talk to him. See, he, he know me, I know him. My God, it can't be it. Boogie would find out that he was facing 65 years. His lawyer stood on business though, lifting Boogie up when he was breaking down, losing it from the news. But me personally, I feel like it ain't good to vent because there's people out here that hear your stories. And, you know what I'm saying? Like they won't use it against you. People will hear your story, see you crying and everything, break it down, begging to God. And when they'll just walk up and like, damn, it's crazy. Like, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I had that plenty of times, like. Worse. Detectives then tried to hit Big Boogie with the old McDonald's and a drink to rat and point dudes out, but he stood his ground, as if fighting for his freedom wasn't enough. While on his way to court, he heard about the tragedy that struck. U.S. Marshals would murk his homie, Brandon Weber. Reports state that Weber was shot by members of the U.S. Marshals Service after law enforcement attempted to serve several warrants outside of a home on the 2000 block of Durham Avenue. He later dies as a result of his incident. Rest in peace to dude. 
According to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, Weber allegedly rammed his vehicle into the officer's vehicle multiple times before exiting with a weapon. Things got out of hand and according to family members, the officers upped the pole and hit bro up to 20 times. According to law enforcement though, they tell a different story, saying Weber shot a dude five times before stealing his whip. Then, when the cops pulled up, he rammed their vehicle multiple times before getting his strap. Weber, a father of three, is accused of shooting a man five times before stealing his car in Hernando, Mississippi. Before he was shot by marshals, officials say Weber ran the officer's cars multiple times before pulling out a gun. His passing sparked hell in the streets as the community ended up in a full-on brawl with law enforcement in a riot. Things was getting wild and according to law enforcement, Weber's pops put out a hit on cops to the gangster disciples. Although nobody else got got, three dozen officers were injured. Big Boogie was already weighed down and now he had to deal with this. When I, when I lost Brandon, I, I, I had court that day. Drew him to it, but I never forget. Luckily, Big Boogie would beat the charge and be a free man ready to shake up the industry with songs he wrote behind bars. In a later interview after his release, Big Boogie explained that the cops got the wrong person and Brandon was actually a case of mistaken identity and being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Man, Big Boogie was back to getting his blessings later though, and Boosie, who was his childhood hero and favorite rapper, linked up with bro and turned up in the trenches. Him, Boosie, and Boosie's son Tootie Raw would release the banger Slide Then. Boogie was taking over the streets. Bro got to the point where he didn't even have to perform. Just point the mic and the crowd would shout out his words word for word. They say God gives the hardest battles to his strongest soldiers, and Boogie was about to learn that firsthand. He would suffer another loss, and I'm not sure if Q is a blood brother or they just really tight, but he calls him his little bro whenever his name comes up in interviews and songs. January 2021, Q lost his life while Boogie was out of town. Big Boogie copped a chain with his picture and dropped the track conversation with Q dedicated to his little bro. The cops wasn't trying to hear nothing about that. On April 8th, 2021, they slid on Big Boogie and his team on Interstate 55, causing a whole scene, slamming dudes and women to the ground in a mass arrest. Here is video from another witness in a different location showing officers with guns. Jason Boone also saw it. They were slamming ladies on the ground and I feel like that was unfair. Boogie was arrested along with 20 plus other people for allegedly shooting another driver on I-55 and was charged with one felony according to an affidavit. Right, Neil, so a lot of this information here just coming in. That rapper, Big Bougie, he's from Memphis, Tennessee, and is one of 20 people arrested after this shooting. Take a look. It seemed like they got bro this time around, but later they confirmed the felony charge was only for possession of dope within a correctional facility, and Boogie wasn't held for the shooting. So he paid 10K bond and was back to business. He was overcoming everything tossed his way, but at some point it just seemed like dudes was out to take his life. One of Gucci man's, his artist, Matt Critter, was trying to walk down on rappers and Boogie was one of them allegedly. He went as far as calling Boogie a bit and banning him from Memphis. They didn't get the wrong young nigga money, man. You know what I'm saying? You nigga can't come in the city no more. Then another Gucci artist named FTO Set posted an alleged clip holding Big Boogie chain like he snatched it off, bro. Joe. Boogie wasn't gonna let that slide and popped up calling Cap, showing that he still had his chain and let dudes know he gonna stretch something if they keep playing with him. On that video, they were doing that on that video one. They don't need shine like that. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm, 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 I'm just saying, it's true. As one rapper was defeated, another rapper popped up. Next, Kevo Money, who calls himself the GOAT. He came out of the cut for some smoke. He was feeling the way that Big Boogie posted that he was the GOAT, so he reposted it with a caption, Ninjas Wanna Look Up To Me, with the laughing emoji. And Big Boogie kept it professional with a post to the haters not giving in to the beef mentality. But he had one more to go up against. It was like he was facing off with rappers until he got to the boss battle. Another Gucci artist, the shystiest of the shysties, Pooh Shiesty. Things popped off between the two when Boogie got out of jail and Pooh Shiesty thought he said something to him behind a fake page. You came to me by the fake page. That's weird, but you keep this shit over there. You feel me? Boogie would respond telling Pooh Shiesty if he wanted a feature, he could have just said that. But if you want a feature, I, 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 I pay you, bro. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Pooh Shiesty will respond back, laughing at Boogie's response. Ain't no beef, y'all. Don't think we beefing. This a barber, y'all. This man was just cutting her in jail. 
ain't ain't no beef, but why you say something back? What a feature? A feature? A feature? <laughs> Man, I ain't you can't pay for a feature like that. My mom, you can't pay for one of my features, girl. Shiesty then went on to diss the whole movement, Red Rum, before reminding Boogie that he got shows to pop out to, so he better watch his mouth. Oh, my son, get it at my side. Hey, Boogie, hey, Red Rum, I would get out there in the street with your gang, me by myself. First whole gang right now, right now today in like 30 minutes on live, all this shit. Boogie didn't take too kindly to the disrespect. His Red Rum family real close to him for real. He said, Red Rum, f this and f this. Red Rum ain't even no gang, dumb ass nigga. Red Rum a whole family nigga. You see what I'm saying? I'm from Corner Pitta, that's where I started from, so I put the hood on my back. So, he decided to address everybody and Pooh Shiesty was included. If anybody came to his shows, something was going on. Sadly, news emerged saying that Boogie was hit up at his show in a hailstorm of bullets that sounded like a war zone. Unfortunately, somebody lost their life. Boogie had to go through seeing her pass right in his arms. News reports state that over 100 shots were fired for over 40 seconds straight, and Boogie was hurting about that one, and he wanted to catch a body, but bro matured to the point to think things through and not let his anger make him lose all he worked for. At first, many people pointed fingers at Pooh Shiesty for being the one responsible, but cops soon arrested two men for the crime, Dorhan Churchman and Sheldon Gibbs. Big Boogie, the big dude, is still standing tall and pushing forward with his career. He's all about walking with God, being a leader of his team, and has dreams of being a therapist to get people through their dark times. As usual, stay smart, stay alert, and stay real. I'm out, y'all.